I don't know. Okay, here we go. This, this unit is entitled Statistics. Today is just a little background on some new vocabulary involving statistics. And then we'll get into our old friend mean, median, mode. And that's what your calculators are for today is a different way to, other than just typing in every single number and dividing by how many of them are. I'm going to show you a different way. You can The calculator will do the mean and median for you in an instant. All right, but before we do that, here we go. Let's go over a couple new uh, vocabulary terms. Uh, population versus sample. Let's say I wanted to do a study on the average number of children in, the, in a Del Mar family. All right. My population would be the entire town of Del Mar. Is it possible, though, to survey the entire town? Probably. Probably not. Realistically, probably not. Okay, so what I need to do is break that down into a smaller group, which is called my, my sample, okay, because it's impossible. Let's say if you want to do it for the United States, that's not going to happen, okay? That's my population, but to break that down so I can start surveying people, that's my sample. So I did the best I could to find a diagram here. So here's my population. It's impossible to get to every one of these people, so I just take a few of them, all right? Randomly select, and we'll talk about how do I appropriately randomly select them, what's, what's fair and what's unfair. Take a couple of them and that becomes my sample, okay? Everyone good? Population versus sample. Population's everybody, sampling is taking a few people from the population, all right? And then I have, well, let's answer one. Identify the population and sample in my example here. So estimate, I want to estimate the gasoline mileage of new cars sold in the U.S. Uh, so I take 845 new cars and find they have an average of 21.5 miles per gallon. So what's my population? What's my sample here? All right, so let's start population. What's my population here? What's up, Gianna? All new cars. There you go, all new cars. And again, almost impossible to get to every single new car and find out their gas mileage. So I take a sample of these new cars, and in this case, what's my sample? 845 new cars. All right. Everyone all right on sample and population? Because I want to get through this quick today. You get, it, it, you'll be able to do your assignment and get out of here. Okay, statistic versus a parameter. You come up with a conclusion. What did we come up with with the 845 new cars? What did we find out about these 845 new cars? They average 25.1 miles per gallon. So this right here, this fact, the 25.1 miles per gallon, that's called a statistic. Okay, whatever you find out about the sample is called your statistic. Whatever you relate it back to the population, the fact you find about the population, that's called a parameter. All right, so going back to my little chart up here, all right, whatever, whatever you find out about the sample, that's called my statistic. Whatever you find out about the population, that's called my parameter. Okay? I keep doing that. So how do I collect all this? All right, how do I collect all this data? All right, one way, most popular way usually is going through a survey, asking people questions. Now, you have to be careful though because you want to ask the right questions. You don't want to ask what we call biased questions, questions that are going to affect the outcome. You want an unbiased question. So what makes a question unbiased or what makes it biased? It could be too wordy. No one wants to have to listen to you, all right? I get it, you guys do it to me all the time, right? You don't wanna have to listen to it. Asking a question that causes a strong reaction. I'll get to that in a second. Encouraging a certain response in your question or addressing more than one issue in your question. Those would all could be considered something that would make a question biased. So what I have here, I got three questions that I'm gonna put on a survey. Do you think they're biased or unbiased? All right, first one, somebody comes up to you. Do you think the school needs a new gym and a football field? 
Biased or unbiased question? Why biased? Because it's addressing more than one issue. Okay? I feel like I have to pick one or the other instead of saying, well, I don't think we need either. Right? You're, you're kind of forcing me into a corner and picking one. All right? So this would be a biased question because it addressed more than one issue. All right, what about, hey, don't you agree that the cafeteria should serve healthier food? Why? You're basically telling them how they answer, aren't you? Eh. Don't you agree? So bias, because it, here's encouraging a certain response. And then our final one. How, do you, how often do you exercise? Un, unbiased, right? There's no... Okay, then that's your response. I'm not forcing you to say one or two days, though, am I? So unbiased. All right, so survey. Survey, one way I can collect all this data, all right? I can do a survey. Anybody heard of the census before? Every 10 years, usually they send a surveyor, they call your house, seeing, all right, how many kids do you have in there, who's living there, et cetera, all right? So they can find out how many people are in the United States and some fact about them, all right? That's an example of a survey. Like we just went over, surveys have advantages and disadvantages. Big disadvantages, the type of question you could ask, all right, if it's biased or unbiased. There's two different ways, though, I want to go over two other different ways I could collect data. One's an experimental study. Let me show you an example of one right now. I have just invented a new drink that makes teenagers especially more alert during the day. And I want, and I want to test this new drink to see if it actually works. I would do what's called an experimental study, which is the following. I'm going to take this class in particular. I'm going to break you up into equal groups, two groups. One I'm going to give my new drink to. The other one I'm going to give you a drink, but it's not the one I created. It's just a fake one. All right? And I'm going to test the results. All right? That's called an experimental study, where I divide it up into groups. One gets the treatment. The other does not get the treatment or gets some kind of fake treatment instead. All right? Here we go. A couple other things I want you to add to this one, too. When you do an experimental study, they can suggest patterns. Oh, I see that everyone that took my drink is more alert versus the people that I gave the fake drink to. And some of you probably have heard of this, probably in science class, it can determine cause and effect relationships. My drink caused you to be more alert, or my drink did not cause you to be more alert. All right, so experimental studies can suggest patterns, and they can determine a cause and effect. The third and final way you can do a study, it's called an observational study, where literally you go in and you just observe. You do not affect the environment one bit. You don't break them up or anything. The, take a look at the example I have. Does an SAT prep course result in higher SAT scores? I'm not breaking you up into groups. All I'm going to do is I'm going to see data that says, all right, these, kid, these guys took the SAT course. These guys did not. Let me compare their SAT results. Okay, I'm just going in and comparing the data without separating everybody into groups. All right? Add something here for uh, part D, and that is they can suggest, can suggest patterns. Oh, it looks like everyone that took the SAT course did better on the SATs. But it cannot determine cause and effect.
So let me kind of try to get this straight with you guys. Oh, it looks like everyone who took the prep course did better on the SATs, but does that necessarily mean because you took the prep course, that's why you did well? No, that's, that would be an experimental study. I do that to see if that happened, right? So that's why it cannot determine cause and effect. All right, ready to roll? Help me out. Which of the following uh, methods would I use to study the effects on a baby whose mother used drugs during her pregnancy? I didn't make these up. Which one? What do we think here? Be careful here too. What would I want to do here? Obviously not census, right? So I want to know the effects on a baby whose mother who used drugs during pregnancy. What would probably be a good method here? And can we get rid of another one here? Yeah, experimental. Okay, can we get rid of that one? I'm not going to divide them up and, all right. Yep. I just want, all I'm doing is I'm doing a study on babies whose mothers use drugs. So their mother used drugs, what's the effect on the babies? I just want to go in. I know the mom has taken drugs during her pregnancy. What effect does it have on the baby? So between survey and observational study, which one would be better? Ops going in and, and just looking at the baby and saying what occurred, yes. Okay, what's wrong with the sample survey? The, yeah, the, is they, are they really gonna admit that they took the drugs even though we know they did? Probably not, they probably don't wanna answer a survey, honestly anyway. Okay, so conducting the survey now. Remember what I said, oh, remember what I said at the beginning taking a population and breaking them off. What's the fairest way that I've given you right here to take a sample of the high school? Should I select every person that goes into the weight room, school building, cafeteria, or volunteers in PE class, or asking for volunteers? What is the most fair way that will cause the most, the least bias possible? You want the best rep representative sample here. So what would be the best way? Why two? Does everybody go in? Does everybody go in these two here? No, not everyone goes in there, right? All right. Volunteer. Are you going to get everyone, anybody you need to volunteer in a phys ed class? No. And if you think about the way our phys ed classes works, isn't it what? 9, 10, 11, 12? So one phys ed class is just gonna have nine, 10, and that doesn't represent the entire school, all right? So that's why, yes, selecting every fifth person. Everyone's gotta come into the building, all right? Everyone's gotta come into the building. All right, let's finish this up quick now. Different, different types of data I can have. You guys are probably used to this, mean, median, and mode. Mean's your average. And I probably, have done a poor job of this because every time you guys take a test, I'm like, oh, the class average is this. But I probably don't want to, let's say I say the class average is a 79 on a test, but someone or two people in here got a 15%. Is that 79 really representative of the class? No, because that, those two kids that got 15% threw off everything. All right, they're what we call outliers. Okay, they're what we call outliers. So I probably, that for me saying the average is 79 is probably not the best. What I want to probably do instead is say the median, which is a number that represents 50% or above, 50% or below that number. All right, the middle and the mode. Anybody remember the mode? Never heard of that before? That's the one that occurs the most, the score that occurs the most. The median is the one that separates it 50-50, the one in the middle. And the mean is the average mode, the one that occurs the most. Okay, so let's find our numbers here without a calculator, and then I'll show you how to use it. Well, we can use it to do the arithmetic, but I'm going to show you how to check it on the calculator real quick. All right, so let's go mean. 
How do I find the mean again? Add them all up and divide by the number of pieces there are. So go ahead and I'll give you a second, add them all up. When somebody's got them, let me know. This you can use a calculator for. I'm just gonna show you how you can use your graphing calculator to check though. When somebody's got all of them added up, let me know. Seventy-five. Yep. Out of how many pieces do I have? Eight pieces. Okay. Seventy-five divided by eight. Nine point three seven five. So there's the mean. Nine point three seven five. Okay, let's go to median now. Before we find the median though, because remember median, middle value splits it up 50-50, I have to do what to those numbers? Organize them into order, yes. All right, so let's organize them first. So let's see, two, five, make sure I don't skip any here, eight, nine, 10, 11, 13, 17, got them. Okay, so the median, right? Middle number now. Oh, what happens? What happens, ready? There's two middles. So what do I do if there's two middles? Find the mean of the two middles, all right? So my mean is going to be 9 plus 10 divided by 2, which, yep, some of you are already getting 9.5 for my medium. And finally, mode. The number that occurs the most, what do you notice? They all occur once, right? So in that case, if they all occur the same amount of times, we say there is no mode. If they all occur the same amount of time. All right, ready? To, your calculator does all this real quick. Ready? All right, everyone go to the calcs, make sure they're on. You have a stat button. Welcome to the stats unit, S-T-A-T. -T. Everyone locate your stat button. Should have this display that comes up. We want stat edit, that first choice. And what, up, what pops up, which you guys are seeing for the first time, these are called lists where we can put our data into. Before we move on, does anybody have numbers already in there on list one? Okay, simple fix. If you, hey, and this goes to everybody. If you ever wanna clear out the numbers in your list really quickly, highlight the list on top, L1, press clear, enter. Clear, enter, and they all should be wiped out now. All right, so now let's put our numbers in that we just found the mean, median, mode for. And they do not have to be in any order. All right, nine, enter. 11, enter. Five, 10, two, 17, eight, 13. And here's a little trick. How many numbers did we have, remember? How many of these did we have? Eight, everyone see right below here? Everyone, it's, you're about to type in your ninth one, which means we had just typed in eight. Yes, so that's a little trick. You've typed in the correct amount of um, uh, pieces of data. All right, where do I go to find the mean and the median? Everyone typed in, all good. Okay, go back to stat. Go to calculate now, calculate. If you ever want to find the mean or the median, we want one variable stats, okay? If mean and median, we go to one variable stats. We'll never be in two variable stats this year, by the way. One variable stats. Now, depending on the version of calculator you have, here's where we're going to get different and I got to slow down. Everyone, I hope, put all those numbers in list one. Yes, everyone put them in list one. And you have L1 up. I'll get to you guys that don't have this in a second. Everyone's got L1 already put in there. Okay? We only used one list. We didn't use another one. So we're going to keep the frequency list blank. And we're going to calculate. You guys that do not have this, you probably have a parenthesis that says one var stat parenthesis. Yeah, parenthesis. 
Just as, okay, one var stat, that's all it says? Okay, you guys have above the number one, you have L1, which is where you put your numbers, right? So you guys just have to do second one and have put the list one in there. Good? Okay, everyone can go ahead, calculate, enter. You see a bunch of numbers flying up. Anybody remember that 9.375? What would that represent? That's my mean. So X bar, that first number is your mean. 9.375 does it for you. All right. These other numbers, don't worry. Don't worry. But if you scroll down, you'll see our boy median. 9.5. I apologize, but it doesn't do mode for you. I think you can find the most frequent one on your own. Okay. And don't worry about the rest of the numbers. We'll get back to them eventually in this unit. But for now, again, X bar, that's your mean, median, MED. All right, all good? All right, find the mean, median, and mode of the following table without a calculator. Hey, 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 baloney, I just showed you. Why, do I, why am I gonna force you kids to do it by hand? I just showed you how to do this. But now the, oh, oh, oh. Only difference is now, don't we have two columns? And I do want you to understand what this is meaning. Everyone see the 56 for the data and the four for the frequency. What's that telling me? There's four, if I wrote it out, four 56s, right? That's what that means, okay? And there's 79 73s, that's what that means. All right, so let's go back to our list. Remember how to get there, stat, edit, and again, if you guys weren't paying attention before, to clear out a list, I highlight the list I want to clear out. Clear, enter. And here we go. Let's type in the data points for us. 56. 73. And yes, I know I'm only typing them once because guess where I'm going to put my frequency now? over in L2. So it matches exactly what I have on my paper. So 56 happened four times, nine times, seven times, five, five. Everyone all good? Okay, go back to where we found the mean and median, stat, Where'd we go? Calculate. One var stats. Now we're going to change this up now. All our data is in list one, but where's our frequency now? In list two. So most of you above your two button have an L2. So second, two. Oh boy. That's okay. A upgrade. That's on me. Okay, here you go, there we go, I'm back. Second, two, so take a look at L2. You guys, hey, ready? L1, and then you gotta separate L2 with a comma right above your guys' seven button. So L1 comma L2, good? Everyone else all right? Go ahead, calculate. Boom, there it is. We don't have to do it by hand. So what's my mean? What's the mean? Seven, about 75.6. I'll take 75.6. Yep. So the mean, 75.6. How about the median if you scroll down? Median, 78. There it is. And again, it won't give you the mode because hopefully you can handle that on your own. What's the most frequent number? 73. Why? Because it occurs nine times. All right. Questions from you guys going. All right. Plenty of time today. Plenty of time. Get an answer key. Let's get going. Should be easily done. <laughs> 